What's up guys, Icepick13 here, and welcome to Games on the Weekend, a small news show going over some of the gaming, streaming, and general content creation spaces and the news around it. To start things off, we'll get into a couple of the smaller stories. First up, Cuphead is getting an animated series on Netflix. Not new news, but the release date is February 18th, so it's coming up quick. If you don't know, Cuphead is a critically acclaimed game known for its old school art style and its ruthless difficulty. The show adopts the 50s art style of the game while updating the animation style to something more contemporary. If you haven't canceled your Netflix subscription yet due to the increased pricing, you can check it out in a few weeks. This next one's a bit weird. Someone is making a Pokemon game where you hunt actual Pokemon. I'm not sure why this is a thing, but here it is. It's an FPS that kind of reminds me of old school arena shooters, kind of like Unreal or Doom, maybe even Turok. Now that I mention it, I'm gonna try something here real quick, hang on. This might be the way. The thing is, at the time of writing, I can't seem to find any official promotion for this game anymore. I guess Nintendo already lawyered up with a cease and desist, so I doubt we'll be seeing an official release of this anytime soon, if ever. Next up is Battlefield 2042. Two things regarding this game this week. First, Battlefield 2042 is rumored to possibly go free to play. This comes from Tom Henderson on Twitter, who has leaked details in the past on other games, so take this with a grain of salt. His tweet reads as follows, quote, EA is reportedly very disappointed with how Battlefield 2042 has performed and is looking at all the options when it comes to this title. This is including looking at free to play in some capacity. This was posted on the 20th and at the time of writing, he hasn't updated with any new information, but is continuing to investigate this, saying they're quote, consulting analysts, lawyers, and developers, and it's taking a bit of time to put together. I want to provide answers instead of questions, end quote. Now, this has gotten a lot of the Battlefield community talking, and some are pretty pissed, as everyone who has purchased the game and still hasn't looked into or gotten a refund for the game feels cheated. While I did purchase the game myself, even getting the Ultimate Edition, it's hard to get excited about a potential free-to-play model. Granted, that's my fault, but the idea that EA may look into this as an option when the game itself is still in a bit of a state, which is putting it lightly, is pretty frustrating. That being said, a lot of the criticisms levied against the game so far will need time to be addressed, but the Battlefield community, at least from what I've seen, feels like the devs are not taking into account their feedback as a mock-up of a new scoreboard still leaves out crucial details like deaths and seems to group both teams together in one continuous list instead of splitting the board across two sides for each team respectively. Hopefully, one day this will get turned around, but the next thing regarding Battlefield doesn't inspire much confidence. For those that don't know, Battlefield Portal is a part of the Battlefield 2042 suite, which allows players to make their own game modes using updated assets from past Battlefield titles as well as 2042 assets and maps. DICE has featured modes that they promote on the front page, one of which was a zombie style game mode. The thing is, players discovered they could use this mode as an XP farm, which DICE has been cracking down on custom portal servers for, limiting XP gained across those servers. However, that cap wasn't implemented for DICE promoted modes, allowing players to farm XP through that zombies mode. Once DICE caught wind of it, they removed the mode from Portal. Now people are criticizing them for adding an XP farm mode when they were cracking down on those modes to begin with. The Battlefield 2042 circus continues. Before we get into the last story of this video, I just want to say if you like what you've seen so far, feel free to drop a like and hit that subscribe button. It truly does help me out trying to sneak into the algorithm like a fucking so any help in that regard is very much appreciated. If you'd like to follow me online, my socials are in the description as well. Now that the excitement has settled down a bit, I wanted to talk a bit more about the whole Activision Blizzard being acquired by Microsoft thing. I'm sure we've all heard a bunch of details already, but still, I just wanted to get my two cents out there. Mostly, I wanted to talk about a few different things here. First, will Call of Duty become an Xbox exclusive? I'm thinking no, but also yes. To clarify, Phil Spencer has gone on Twitter talking about releasing Call of Duty on PlayStation. The tweet reads as follows. Had good calls this week with leaders at Sony. I confirmed our intent to honor all existing agreements upon acquisition of Activision Blizzard and our desire to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation. Sony is an important part of our industry and we value our relationship." End quote. The verbiage here is a little odd, using the word intent here. 
This doesn't necessarily mean they're confirming the release on PlayStation, just that it's on the table. This may have something to do with contractual obligations, if any, to release and distribute Call of Duty via hard copies and the PS Store. This is why I'm saying no but also yes in regards to Xbox and PC exclusivity. No, because I feel like a huge revenue funnel will be lost, and a large portion of the player base will be lost as well, as crossplay has become pretty integrated into Call of Duty titles. But also, yes, because Microsoft is a big company, and would probably push players to adopt an Xbox Series X or S, as that would be the more affordable option for customers, as opposed to trying to build a PC or even buy a pre-built one. Here's my second item of discussion, PC launchers. Will Microsoft keep Battle.net or move all Activision Blizzard titles to the Xbox app? Or maybe even do both? I think we're going to see the Battle.net launcher stick around, as it does have its own identity and association with it. I think we'll just see some sort of Xbox Live integration with the launcher, so you could still earn achievements and easily access their social network. However, it would be easier to integrate these games into Game Pass if they were on the Xbox app. A middle of the road solution to this would be to have both options available to users. It might be a bit pricier for Microsoft, but I'm sure they can eat the development cost for that kind of integration. Next up, World of Warcraft. Specifically, will WoW subscriptions be included as part of Game Pass? I feel like this would be a very smart move for Microsoft. Sure, it does take a hit to the overall revenue that WoW brings in just based on subscriptions, but still, WoW, from what I hear, is somewhat struggling, so this could be a way to bring old players back as well as new players into the WoW ecosystem, while also doubling as Game Pass subscribers bringing WoW players into the Game Pass ecosystem. I feel this is a no-brainer here and I'd be more surprised if that didn't end up happening. We could also see this as some kind of add-on, like if you have your Game Pass subscription but for $5 you get the WoW subscription add-on. Just a thought. Lastly, I wanted to talk about how this affects us now and possibly in the future. This acquisition is, in my opinion, very good for gamers right now. We'll be seeing all of these games come to Game Pass, which is great. There are so many avenues to integrate parts of Activision Blizzard into the Xbox ecosystem, like the WoW subs being a part of Game Pass, and we have a chance to get rid of the parasite called Bobby Kotick, while helping establish a non-toxic work environment for all of the developers. However, this acquisition can be seen as monopolistic, consolidating the industry into the hands of a few, which will more than likely affect pricing egregiously for us in the future, which is no good for the consumer. Plus, on top of that, the looming threat of making these games exclusive still is still present. And that's all I had to talk about today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see, hit those like and subscribe buttons. It always helps me out. On screen, you'll see a couple of videos recommended for you. If you have the time, I'd appreciate it. watch. You can find all my socials down in the description below as well as well as the comment section, so feel free to let me know how you felt about any of these stories in this video. Stay hydrated, hope you have a good one, and I'll catch you next time.